Welcome to another video on money and banking. This is Money and Banking Continued. In the last video, we looked at a, the case where uh, a depositor makes a deposit, and then as the bank is supposed to do, to stay in business, that is, it, it turns around and makes, makes loans from those deposits. So again, banks uh, and other depository institutions are basically in the business of taking deposits, paying some interest on them, maybe, certainly making a home for people's money. In other words, making it convenient for people to use money and maybe earn a little bit of interest. And then these banks, of course, take these deposits, uh, which produce reserves, and they make loans and they hopefully charge more interest rate on those loans than they pay on those deposits. And by doing that, the bank is able to pay its expenses and stay in business. So let's do a speed review of the case where someone makes a deposit and then the loan is made. And then we're going to, uh, the, the new piece will be, we'll take a look at what happens when that loan is repaid. And the interesting thing is, remember, when loans are made, money is created. When loans are repaid, money in, in effect is destroyed. Destroyed is, again, maybe too strong of a term, but it's deleted. It's, uh, the money supply expands, let's do it that way, when uh, banks make loans and when loans are repaid, uh, the money supply contracts. So again, let's work through this and we're gonna do this very quickly. Let's suppose that Smith makes a, is it Smith? Yeah, no, nope, last time we said Jones. So let's say Jones makes a deposit of a thousand dollars. Now this is, uh, I'm gonna use the same names and numbers that I used in the book. So Jones makes a deposit uh, of a thousand dollars. That's a, a liability to Bank Z. Bank Z now has a thousand dollars in reserves. Notice how good I'm getting at this, even though I have a little bit of trouble <coughs> writing on one of these pads. Notice that I've got most of this committed to memory. I'm just looking at some notes here just to remind myself what I absolutely have to cover so I don't go off on a big tangent here and talk for hours. So I have notes to keep me from talking too long, not from talking too little. And the, um, the point here is the deposit creates reserves. So this is both a liability and an asset. This is uh, transaction A, if you remember the deposit is made. Then of course, Bank Z is going to try to move those reserves. How? By loaning out uh, some of those reserves. So uh, Bank Z makes a loan. If you remember that loan was made to Smith. Okay. And Smith receives a deposit into her account. Or was it, I think, uh, Smith was a he, so we'll, we'll stay with the, what the other video said. So Smith gets a deposit, and this deposit, look, is effectively created out of thin air. I just wanna make sure I have my names correct here. So Smith gets this deposit. This deposit here is really new money. This is, this is uh, let me uh, go to a different color here. I'll go to a different color. And this deposit right here is newly created money. It's not like, it's not like a deposit was taken out of one account and put, put into another account. This is a deposit that is simply created because Smith has signed his name to a piece of paper. All right? Now, if that troubles you, um, good, because you're starting to grapple with the, with the fact that uh, not only does the government through its central bank create money, but banks have the ability to create money as well, up to limits, we'll see, okay? All right, so let me get this out of the way here. And let's just continue to move down just a little bit. But that's not the end of the story. This is transaction B now. This is transaction B where the loan is made. But Smith isn't going to leave those funds in the account. As we said last time, Smith is paying 5% interest 
let's say paying 5% interest on this loan and only maybe getting 2% on this deposit if, if the funds are left there a long time. And of course, Smith didn't borrow to earn interest. If Smith wanted to earn interest, Smith would have uh, put this maybe in a certificate or something, or uh, paying better interest than 2%. So Smith, uh, Smith borrows to buy something. So Smith withdraws this money. We're gonna talk about, and this is money. Smith withdraws. A negative deposit is a withdrawal, right? When you withdraw, deposits go down. And that deposit, um, that I should say negative deposit, that withdrawal is going to pull reserves out of the bank. So the reserves are gonna go down over here, okay? And all of this is review. All of this is review. I'm speeding through this because this is all review. And then we know that when all is said and done, the bank only has a couple hundred dollars uh, in reserves against that thousand dollar deposit. So if you check this out, what happens here? You still have the loan on the books. The 800 from here leaves 200 and then this washes. So if you recall at the end of the last video, we have a thousand dollar deposit over here. Let's use a different color to, sh to, to check these off. We have the thousand dollar deposit we have the $800 loan, and then the reserves net here, and we, this becomes 200, right? So that's the final picture. So after both transactions, this bank has $200 in reserves, an $800 loan, and $1,000 on deposit here, based on those two transactions. Now this isn't the bank's complete balance sheet. This is just uh, these two transactions. Okay, the question we're trying to answer uh, in this particular video, however, is not how banks create money. We talked about that in the last video. What we want to do here is we want to talk about how the repayment of the loan actually reverses the creation of money. So let's go ahead and do that. And we're going to move down here a little bit. And I've created another T account. So let's just, um, let's just do a little calculating here. So the, the loan was what? The loan was $800, right? That loan that was taken out by Smith was $800. $800 times 5% is $40 in interest, right? And that may have been paid, the loan may have been repaid over multiple periods and the interest was paid in that. But just to keep this really simple, Let's just say there's one repayment. There's one, one payment that has to be made to repay, to repay it. So we're just gonna do a one payment uh, system here. So the loan was made, and then later on, Smith is going to what? Smith is gonna repay the loan. So what happens when the loan is repaid? Well, the loan principal has to be repaid, the $800 has to be paid, and the $40 has to be paid, that's the interest. So how much does, does how much comes out of Smith's account at a future date, well, 840. So Smith is going to pay 840 out of his account to repay this loan. So that's gonna be, and remember, Smith has an account with Bank Z. That's why we were, Bank Z was willing to loan to Smith is because Smith was doing uh, his banking at Bank Z. And so this $840, um, withdrawal to pay, pay, pay the loan is going to with, with, uh, reduce reserves by, by 840. Okay, so this is transaction A and this is transaction A. Well, I should have done this in green, but I'm getting so excited here, I forgot what color I was using. So bear with me, bear with me, all right? Um, now, this is not where the story ends. That's the payment, that's the payment that Smith makes to the bank to cover the loan principal, $800, and the loan interest of $840. Okay, both of those have to be repaid or paid. Now, what happens from the bank's perspective? 
okay? Smith pays off the loan. What happens? Well, the loan portfolio is going to go down, um, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, so the loan portfolio is going to go down. How much is it going to go down by? It's going to go down by $800. So Smith is no longer going to owe that loan. So on the, the bank's loan portfolio goes down by $800. Smith no longer owes that $800. So Smith has paid off his loan, okay? But the bank now has what? $840 in reserves. Right? So Smith made a withdrawal, and that reduced the reserves by 840, but the loan is repaid, and that increases the reserves by 840, and you'll see that that washes. Okay? And this is kind of, this is, again, this is transaction B. This is the effect of the, of the repayment on the, on the bank's books. And then, the bank is going to end up with what over here? The bank is going to end up with a $40 interest payment, and that's essentially the profit that the bank earns. See, this is what the bank is in business for. The bank is in business um, to earn interest, and this would not go. This would this would go to what we call owner's equity. This is essentially interest income or profit. I call it a couple different things. So notice that the T account, the T accounts continue to balance after these two transactions. Minus 840 plus 840, that washes, so you have minus 800 on this side. Minus 840 plus 40 is minus 800 on this side. So here's what happens. The repayment of the loan essentially wipes out the loan and provides the bank with some interest income. That's essentially what happens. And so we can come down and kind of summarize this with another T account. Let me go ahead and put another T account in here. So just very quickly using my whiz bang drawing tools. It's really fun to do these videos. I hope they're fun to watch. They're, they're fun to do. Okay, so we're going to be done with that. And then we're going to go bank. So what, what does bank Z end up with? Well, let's go back up and see. What, what is canceled here? The reserves have canceled. See, this is canceled. And so what do we have? We have, we have what? We have minus an $800 loan that Smith had taken out, right? Minus $840 and what? Well, let's go upstairs, upstairs. what is that gonna be? That, that's gonna be reserves, isn't it? No, that's, gonna, that's we're on the liability side, that's gotta be deposits. And who, 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 who paid that? Smith. So Smith paid 840, retires his loan, and adds $40 of owner's equity to Bank Z. Bank Z made a profit on this loan of $40. Okay, does the balance sheet continue to balance? Now, you go, okay, Mr. Sipsick, thank you for sharing that. You're turning me into a bank account or trying to, but what's the purpose of this? The purpose of this was to talk about this. Loans create deposits. The repayment of the loan destroys a deposit or reduces deposit, deposits. So repayment of the loan, sorry for my handwriting, the repayment of the loan reduces the bank's level of deposits. Just as the making of the loan expanded the level of the bank's deposits. Now this is a de decrease in the bank's liabilities. But nevertheless, this is also a decrease in the money supply because deposits are money. So get this idea, we wanna get this idea in our head and I'll just write it out down here at the bottom and we'll, we'll wrap, it, wrap it up. 
I have a little bit of room down here, so let me just go ahead and write this, is um, alone leads to what? The expansion, say loans. Loans lead to the expansion of deposits and repayment of loans leads to what? A contraction of deposits in the banking system. And remember, never forget, deposits equal money. Okay? So a relatively, for me, short lesson. I'm not going on long and long here, but I just wanted to give you the, this is, this is your uh, fourth video. And I wanted to give you balance to the third video. In the third video, I show you that loan activity. In the third video, I showed you this. I wanted to review this in the fourth video because this is some fairly complicated idea, some fairly complicated ideas here, and then show you how the repayment of these loans actually reverses what the loan did. All right, so basically the um, the the money supply pulsates around loan activity. So as loans are made, the money supply expands. But as loans are repaid, the money supply contracts. It's like a heart beating. Think of a heartbeat. The heart expands and contracts, expands and contracts. And the bank ha banks have the ability to create deposits and create money and the repayment of those loans actually contracts the money supply. So that's a very important principle. We'll stop there. I hope this was helpful to you. Again, all of this is where? It's in your e-workbook. What is that? That's the book I've written for the course. And we're looking here again at a video from Unit 2, Topic 6. And look, I've already done four videos, and I've got another one to go. So there'll be five videos on this one topic, which should tell you this material is not only difficult, but it's important, which means it's going to turn up on quizzes, and it's going to most certainly turn up on the Unit 2 exam. I'm not threatening you, I'm just trying to give you information that will help you prepare and uh, motivate you to, to learn this material. Uh, learning this money and banking material, I, I mean, beginning to get a grasp of this will really help you understand the world you live in, okay? All right, let you go. See you, see you again in our, our next video. Take care.